Thanks for joining us today on The Getaway. I'm Pastor Danny Akers, pastor of Victory Rock Praise and Worship Center in Galleon, Ohio. And we're coming to you on WFBN TV uh, on our program called The Getaway. I'm glad you could join us today because today we're going to get into talking about the blood covenant. To see what God has for you in a covenant. To see what God has uh, planned for you, what blessings he has for you. And what you can do to step into all those things that's been promised to you. Because we know that through the covenant that God has given us, uh, his word, that we are his people and that he's our God. So we're going to go to Genesis 17, 1 and 2. We're going to talk about Abraham and how that Abraham cut the covenant with God. And how he started the covenant walk that we're going to talk about today. Genesis 17, 1 and 2. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Now, let's just talk about something here because, you know, first of all, we know that Abraham was 99. His wife, Sarah, was around 90 and uh, they're about to see a miracle. But see, before the miracle can come forth, uh, God has to cut a covenant. Now, if you don't understand uh, or have never studied the blood covenant, uh, what a covenant is is interesting because it's an agreement between uh, two people, two parties. It can even be, uh, you know, groups of people can make a covenant. But it goes back to uh, where we see that God, uh, he was making a covenant with Abraham. And see, in our time today, in the modern times, uh, we have courthouses. So when you make an agreement with someone to buy a piece of land, you make agreement with someone to buy a home, or even if you make an agreement with someone to purchase a car, or if you're signing a contract with someone, even right down to the point where uh, we have our wills, we can take everything uh, over to a courthouse and we record them at the courthouse. So there it becomes a legal document recorded so that others can go over. And if anybody ever decides to uh, go back on the agreement, then there's legal matters to take care of that. But back in the days of Abraham, there were no courthouses. Back in the early biblical times, uh, they were no lawyers, no contracts. So they had what was called the blood covenant. Now what this meant was, that it was a binding oath that was made between two parties or two per persons, and they sealed it with blood. And if you broke that covenant, then your own party or your own persons that were with you in your agreement would kill you because it was a covenant of uh, agreement that couldn't be broken. And if you broke the covenant, uh, then there were curses to come upon you. Now you can go in the scripture in Deuteronomy and read where it even talks about the mountain of blessings and the mountain of curses. And I believe today uh, we've become a covenant breaking people because we don't understand. You know, in the Western world where, uh, where we live, uh, we don't understand covenants, you know, because covenants were something that were, you know, come forth out of the biblical times, the Old Testament times, into the new. And we're going to talk about that today. So first thing I want to talk about here is that he's making a covenant with Almighty God. You know, this is where God's telling him he is more than enough. See, when you make a covenant with someone, that person has to back up their side of the deal. So, you know, if you sell someone something, then they have to back up, you know, to purchase, they have to have uh, the purchase price and they have to back up what they promised. But also he says here, that he's making this covenant and he will multiply thee exceedingly. Now, how this works is, is when 
back in the days of when they cut covenants, it meant that you made an exchange. So whatever, uh, like example, we read in history about people like Livingston and Stanley, how that they went into Africa and there that they ran into situations where they couldn't cross over certain territories, certain land. But then one of the guides told him, said, well, you need to cut the covenant uh, with the chief. So I remember one of the stories I like about Stanley was he, uh, he had a goat. And when he made a covenant with this chief, see, you had to uh, make promises. And then you had to tell what the curses was if you broke the promise. Then you had to exchange gifts. And then somebody had to spill the blood so the blood would be mixed so that you become covenant partners. So they said Stanley didn't want nothing to do with it at first, and he kind of rejected it. But he, after he'd become to understand it, he cut the covenant with this one chief to pass through their land. And after he cut the covenant with him, he had to do an exchange of gifts. The chief wanted Stanley's goat, and he didn't want to give it up, but he understanding the covenant, he had to. But the chief gave Stanley a copper woven spear, and he thought, walked away from the deal, that he uh, got the worst end of the deal. But he found out that this chief was one of the highest chiefs in the land. So everywhere he went carrying that spear, they knew that Stanley uh, was in covenant with that chief and nobody ever messed with them uh, after that. So see, this is what it means to be in covenant, that your enemies become my enemies and my enemies become your enemies or my blessings can be bless you and you can bless me. So when he says here that I will multiply thee exceedingly, he's telling us here that this is how God was going to bless Abraham. And, and there's these things about this covenant that I love because as we drop down to uh, verse 13, he says, he that is born in my house and he that is brought with, bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Now, this here is uh, very important that we understand that God being a covenant God, that, you know, he is uh, making everlasting covenants. God don't do temporary covenants. See, the, when, thing, when you make a covenant with God, things begin to change. First thing that happened with Abraham and, and Sarah is God changed their name. He changed Abraham's name to mean, you know, uh, prince of God. He changed Sarah's to mean princess of God. So see, in this covenant, God wanted to bless them. He says right here that he wanted to bless them. But to bless them, he had to not only change their names, but he had to make sure that they were covenant people. He had to make sure that Abraham was a covenant-minded person. See, if you're struggling today and you're not receiving the promises of God, this lesson is going to help you. It's going to help you come to the understanding that maybe, just maybe, you're not living up to your side of the covenant. Maybe uh, that, because I know God can't go back on his word. I know God's word is true. He said that, you know, let every man be a liar and God be true. So I want to help you today to break those cycles to break those uh, things that's holding you back, get into covenant with God, an everlasting covenant. Don't have to be renewed every year because we can see that when Israel kept the covenant, no enemy could defeat them. Because, But when they broke the covenant, then the enemies began to defeat them. So see, in this covenant, God had promised Abraham a son. And we see that you know, Abraham already had a son. He had an Ishmael. And, but this Ishmael was not the promised seed. Now, this is uh, very important to understand because, and, and I could do a whole lesson just on Ishmael, because I believe Ishmael represents when you and I do things in the flesh. It represents when we do things our way and we don't do it God's way. And this is what, you know, we can see that Abraham and Sarah had come up with the plan and uh, they uh, tried to do it their way and come up with an Ishmael. So you may be dealing with an Ishmael, but the Ishmael is uh, not stopping, still not going to stop the promises that God has given you. So if you have an Ishmael, which means a ministry or something you've tried to build and do with on your own without covenant with God, not with it being from the Lord, 
then there's still hope that you can overcome the Ishmael and you can have an Isaac. So we're going to watch as God progresses here because he begins in, in uh, Genesis 15, we'll back up a little bit, and he begins to lay out to Abraham how he's going to bless him, how he's going to give these things and how that God is going to do this. See, God has blessings for you. God has things for you he wants to give you. I really believe that when we get to heaven, we're going to be shown things that God had for us that we didn't get. We didn't receive them. And God's going to say, I stuck to my side of the covenant. I had these lined for you, but you never uh, lined in a covenant to where I could release them to you. So I'm just walking in covenant with God. I'm making covenants with God. I made the covenant of God when I got saved and born again. And we're going to talk about that because that is the initial covenant. But then there's other covenants we can walk in. Just like with uh, in Genesis 15, uh, we can see verses 8 through 11. And we're going to read these and we're going to come back and talk about them. And he said, Lord God, uh, whereby shall I know that I inherit it? And he said unto him, take me a heifer of three years old and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto thee all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. Now watch this. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. So first thing God said to Abraham is, to be in covenant with me, you got to sacrifice. And Abraham, before he was going to make the sacrifice, I love the question he asked God in verse 8. I'm just going to go back and read part of it. He says, whereby shall I know I shall inherit it? In other words, how do I know, God? Now, see, Abraham was a man like us. And, and Abraham walked in the promises of God. He walked in the covenant with God. But there was times when he questioned, how shall I know? So God said, okay, Abraham, you bring these three animals. You sacrifice these animals the way I tell you. You bring the animals I tell you. You lay them out on the ground. And he divided them. And the one, when he divided it and he walked through it, it became the way of blood. So I asked the Lord one time, I said, God, I want to better understand this. I want to better understand what was going on between you and Abraham. And God showed me this. He said, that covenant was a faith covenant by Abraham that he would see the promises afar off that I was going to make to mankind. See, it wasn't just to Abraham. He was the father of our faith. So we see that God showed me this, that, that those three uh, animals that he laid out and the one animal became the way of blood, that God fulfilled that covenant with the three crosses on Calvary. And the one cross, which had Jesus on it, became the way of blood. So we can see that when he said, how shall I know I inherit this? Well, if you read the rest of the story, he took Abraham into a vision. And he showed him what was to come. See, when you're in a covenant with God, there's vision. Because the Bible says the people without a vision perish. But see, when you're in covenant with God and you have a vision with God, then you know that God is going to uphold his part of the vision. Now, it may be for a time. See, this is some, this kind of throws some people off. It's for a time. But one of the other things that God showed me here was he said, there'll be a turtle dove and a young pigeon. But he told him to divide not the dove and the pigeon. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what did that represent? And I believe this with all my heart, that God spoke to me and said the uh, three animals represented the three crosses, the fulfillment of his end of the covenant to Abraham for our faith. But he said the dove and the pigeon that was to be divided not represented the church age. See, remember when Jesus came down and he was baptized by John in the water and, a, and the spirit as a dove landed upon him. So the early church was was uh, had the symbol of the dove. And I did a study one time uh, back before there was internet and all that stuff available to me. I went to the library. I read every book that I could get on pigeons and doves. It was interesting because they're from the same family. 
and it's it was very very uh, interesting to find out that you know they have the same skeleton system they have the same digestive system but the the dove is very sensitive and has a different character than the pigeon and God began to show me he said the church came into being as a dove in other words the the it's the same skeletal structure it's the same intestines it's the same you know inward beings of the spirit in us but that early church had a different character about it than the latter church because I studied about pigeons I was surprised to find out even though they're from the same family as a dove and they have the same intestines and skeleton they're totally different behaviors so the latter church as the end of the church age did not be divided from the early church which was represented by the dove is going to look like a pigeon now this got me excited because you know what I'm kind of a pigeon preacher if you will I'm a little rough, okay? Uh, I still, I, I don't have all the uh, degrees and doctorates and all the things that a lot of people have. I'm not against that. You know, I mean, uh, it's between them and God. But God has raised up a pigeon, I feel like, in me for the last day. You know, not really that polished character, not really that, you know, person, but, but still, it is fulfillment of God in these last days. In fact, our entire church, if you're ever up in the Guyville area, look us up. Our entire church is made up of uh, people who are kind of, you know, from a, a, a rough background. God has brought a lot of people into our, into our church family, changed them, but they still come from, you know, that background. So we can see here that God was trying to show us something, that we're, we're uh, walking out the fulfillment of the covenant that God has given us. And this covenant is to bring us blessings. This covenant is to bring us the goodness and the good things of God. So we can see that as, as Abraham walked in the covenant with God, as Abraham questioned sometimes, you know, in verse 8 of chapter 15, how shall I know? So he fulfilled the, the covenant sacrifices that was required of him. He fulfilled that. So by fulfilling that, he showed God that he was a covenant uh, man. He was willing to sacrifice what God had required of him in order to show God. So then God says, okay. So then he brought forth the son, Isaac. He gave him the son. But then God had the ultimate uh, uh, test, if you want to use that word. I'm a little reluctant to use that word. But he had the ultimate trial uh, for Abraham to see if he really was a, a covenant man. He said, you take Isaac. And, and I believe from my studies that Isaac at this time was at least a late teen, if not like maybe early 20s in age. So it wasn't like he was a little boy. And we see in the pictures that cut and resist. But when him and Abraham traveled to go to the mountain and they were going up to offer the sacrifice, you know, Isaac even asked him, you know, where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, well, God will provide it. See, God will provide the sacrifice. Now, when there's a time when you come into covenant, though, you have to bring your sacrifice. Remember, Abraham had to bring the animals. He had to bring the dove and the pigeon. So he had to do that. But later in the covenant, when it comes to the ultimate sacrifice, God will provide the ultimate sacrifice. Because as we move into the New Testament, the New Testament is a new covenant. So Jesus Christ introduced you and I to the new covenant. He, the early church walked in the new covenant. Now, it doesn't mean it did away with the old. I believe it just means it fulfilled the old and we still are walking in the covenant. So as Abraham has to prove himself that he's a covenant-minded person and he has to offer Isaac, he goes up on the hill and they go up on the hill and they lay out, you know, the fire. They lay out rather the wood and the everything. And there's no sacrifice. So he lays Isaac up on the sacrifice and up on the altar. And he's going to offer him to God. But an angel stayed his hand. Why? Because God didn't really require the blood of Isaac. He required the obedience of Abraham. And this is exciting because, see, 
God wants to sometimes let you go through a situation. He wants to know that you believe in him. He wants to know that you trust him. He wants to know that you are totally confident that he is going to uh, do what he said he's going to do. And whatever he required of you, it wasn't an Ishmael, it was an Isaac. But you, you gave that Isaac. You offered that Isaac up. But see, we know that there was a ram that was stuck in the thickets and Abraham sacrificed the ram. Now, I believe that as he was going up the hill, the whole time God was bringing the ram up the other side of the hill. And see, this is something. I was raised in the hills of Kentucky. And when you climb a hill, you can't see what's on the other side. But you have to wait till you get to the top. So if something's coming up the other side of the hill while you're going up your hill to prove yourself to God, when you get to the top, God will provide. That's exciting. Now, I want to bring this into the New Testament before we have to close today, because in, in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 25, it says, uh, this is Jesus introducing the disciples to the covenant. He said, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. See, the fact that the disciples weren't shocked about what Jesus was doing speaks to us that they were familiar with covenants. And they understood that this was Jesus offering himself as the covenant mill. This is when we take communion. It's to do in remembrance. Now, who are we reminding? We're not reminding God because God's an everlasting covenant God. And we're reminding ourselves that, hey, God provided the ultimate sacrifice. And that through that sacrifice that you and I are in covenant with God. Now, all we have to do is bring our sacrifice. Well, what is it? Well, Romans 12 tells us that we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. So one thing God wants is you to sacrifice yourself to the work and the ministry that God has called you to do. Then when you do that, now you're on the road to walking in covenant with God. You can expect the blessings. You can expect the multitude of blessings that God has planned for your ministry. You know, I'm excited today because... You know, uh, th this is uh, just a day after we received the news that we have now uh, passed all of our inspections on our new facility that we built here at Victory Rock. 8,000 square foot building, all paid for. We don't owe anything on it. We paid cash, nothing on this property uh, we owe for. So God has blessed us because we are covenant-minded people who are walking in a covenant with God. But, you know, I want to drop down before we have to close. I want to read one more verse because in uh, 1 Corinthians eleven thirty, 30, it says, For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now, this troubled me when I read this because, you know, here Jesus is cutting the covenant with the disciples, showing them that he is the sacrifice that God has made, showing them that his blood and his body is going to be offered up for our sins, that we could walk in covenant with God and receive all the benefits that God has for us in our ministry and our walk with him. But then Apostle Paul, as he's sharing this, he says, you know, examine yourself and look at yourself before you take the covenant meal. He says that, you know, that if we drink this uh, and, and eat this unworthily, and what's really what it means there is that without discernment, you're not really discerning, you're entering into a covenant. Some people read that and think it's, uh, they're not worthy. No, listen, you're saved by grace. You know, it's by the grace of God. You receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So God made the sacrifice to bring you into the family. God provided the sacrifice to cut the covenant. He's just asking you to offer yourself as a living sacrifice unto him. But look what it says. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you. See, one of the benefits of our covenant is health. He said, above all, that you walk in health and prosper. 
Uh, there's blessings at the covenant. You know, when, when I read the scripture, I see how God blessed people. He blessed them with lands. He blessed them uh, with, with many things that, that were blessings. And even uh, that in the, you know, all through the scripture, God is a covenant God with many things he wants to bless you with. So if you're sick today, go take communion. Uh, remind yourself that God's a covenant God. Remind yourself that you're a covenant person. Ask God what he requires of you. You know, whatever he requires of you, then do it. You know, that's what Mary told him when Jesus was at the wedding and they run out of wine. She said, whatever he says, do it. See, if you'll just do whatever God says for you to do, because he's a covenant God, then you'll walk in the blessings. You'll walk in the health. You'll walk in the things that he has for you. But look what it says. And many sleep, which what means many are dying premature. Many are dying in our time premature because they're not walking in covenant with God. Now, this is not to condemn you because in you know Romans 8 says, there is therefore now no condemnation in them who are in Christ Jesus. So God isn't condemning you. He's simply wanting to bless you. He's wanting to be that covenant partner that you need in your ministry, in your life, in your family, in your walk upon this earth, that you're, a, you're the head and not the tail. You're blessed and not cursed. You live and not die. That's what God wants to do because he's a covenant God and he stands behind his word. And I'm gonna tell you his word is true and his covenant is real. And we just give you thanks today for joining us. I hope this has been a blessing to you and you just uh, go and renew yourself in that covenant walk with God and you let God show you he's a covenant God. Thank you for joining us today on The Getaway and we'll see you on the next episode. God bless you. I see